So from 17 once again, this is my Metal Gear Rising Revengeance difficulty video walkthrough. This is uh, File 2 Research Facility, and this is a pretty tough level, mainly because of these guys. This is a Mastiff, if you've never seen one. That is the jump attack I mentioned in the previous video, which I don't like. Uh, that was me countering the jump attack though, and one-shotting the enemy. It's it's an interesting situation because the Mastiffs do massive damage to you, but you have the capacity to do massive damage to them, so... I can't say they're not fair, I just think that the jump attack they do, which finds you wherever you are, is bullshit. And... They're a tough enemy to fight because they've got a grab that they spam, and getting out of the grab can be difficult. Avoiding the grab can be difficult as well, you can jump over it, you can do the slash evade. But it's all based on timing, and sometimes in the heat of battle, you know, it catches you out, it does. His attacks, they're all varying speed, but if you can get the parry, you will kill him. And you're going to be glad that it works that way. And it's the ultimate, you know, risk versus reward. But if you miss the parry and you don't get the block, he will one-shot you, so... You can't get frustrated with them, because they're an annoying enemy and you're going to fight a lot of them. So... You've just got to, you know to put up with it really. But this sequence here is is interesting because this is usually Mastiffs patrolling but this is actually a is it a Glad or a Glod? I can't remember the name of this enemy. It's essentially a big tank. Cool thing about this guy is if you parry him you do massive damage. It's the same with everything. Uh, I've read on a forum somewhere that you, you do even more damage from from parries on Revengeance mode. They've, they've actually upped the, the parry damage. Which I think is a cool idea, because it gives you a, a full-on bonus for, for risking dying, essentially. But you'll notice it keeps asking me to go into blade mode so that I can cut the parts of this machine. I intentionally do not do that so I can continue to beat him up while he's stunned to try and kill him quicker. Because in my experience with the game so far, it seems to be just, just faster to kill them that way than to do all the fancy blade mode stuff. And get used to fighting that enemy too, because you're going to fight him, two of them at the same time, on quite a lot of occasions. That is another Mastiff. That is the the running double drop kick attack it does. That was a parry, but believe you me, it, the amount of times that kick has killed me is up there. Because it's fast, it's an unorthodox animation, and boom, one shot. Nothing you can do. But down here is going to be a bunch of the, the handy wankers and a couple of rocket launcher guys. So I run around the corner there to spawn them to try and get them to chase me because sometimes the the soldiers that have weapons will drop the weapon or put the weapon on the back and then they'll come and try and attack you and that's what I was trying to do but these guys showed no interest and look at this bullshit getting grabbed by the, the wankers getting shot at with missiles anyone would think it was Ninja Gaiden 2 all over again but there's a little mercy to these rocket launcher guys, they don't have a million salvos. So instead, I just think, well, there's no gate stopping me from leaving, so what is the point in doing that fight? This fight is different. This fight is tough. Uh, I believe these are called Raptors. There's three of them, they're very aggressive, they will one-shot you with a handful of different attacks, they can stun you, they're a nightmare. But the, the worst part about fighting this enemy is the camera. The camera just cannot keep up with this engagement. It really can't. And because they're so big and because it's so flashy, the nuance can get lost in, in, in all the spectacle. And you'll get hit and not even realise you should have avoided it. It's, it's kind of crazy. But you'll notice that this guy's stunned and I didn't do anything to him. When you kill one, the, the other two go red and they get really mad. But the downside of that madness is after they've finished attacking, after they've done you know, the Blitzkrieg, they stun themselves. And if you have a full blade meter like I do now, you can do the YB attack on them. Uh, unfortunately, I, I did not manage my blade mode very well, so I ended up having to just go in there and try and get the Zandatsu, which I missed. And if you're wondering, I never use the right analog for the Zandatsus. I absolutely hate it. I don't like the right analog stuff at all. Mainly because my right analog is not great, so, and mainly just due to the the finickiness of it. When you're trying to move it for positioning, and you accidentally slash, and on this game there are certain areas where it penalises you for miss slashing, so precision can be a pain in the ass. So instead, I line the shot up and I use the face buttons. I, I have nothing to do with the right analog, if you're wondering. It's just my preference. 
Uh, some people will think that the analog is the best way. I just don't like it. But in this room here, there are three of the Mastiffs. I stealth kill two of them. The third one always sees me from behind for some reason. Not entirely sure why, but it doesn't matter as you need to get comfortable with fighting this enemy. And if you can't get comfortable, you at least... You at least... It's not even a word. You at need... Uh, you at least, sorry, need to understand how they fight and know what to expect because you're going to get them in, in quite large numbers and if you can't cope, you're going to see game over so much. And it'll get to the point, which it did for me, where I turned the voices off because I was sick of them going, Raiden! Raiden! All the time as I was getting one-shotted by stupid stuff. And uh, that actually resulted in me watching a silent ending and reading subtitles because the last boss. <laughs> but that's just how it works. But it's probably time I went through some of the basics. Some of the things I've noticed while playing and all that good stuff. As we're doing this stealth section here to try and get this last Mastiff. <laughs> But the parrying is obviously the way to go. It's the fastest way to kill things. Combo-wise, uh, I don't think there are any moves that that necessarily do more damage than others. Obviously, some of the unique weapons, like the Bloodlust, is massively damaging. But as far as the Katana goes, uh, I prefer the, the, the light attacks. The heavy attacks do do more damage, but it's not no noticeably so much that you want to always do heavies. The, the luxury of the light attacks are they're easy to cancel out of because they're fast. So you never get stuck in an animation and you never have to eat a, a one shot because you couldn't get out of it. And that is the main reason that I would say uh, use X rather than Y. Oh, these, these enemies here, they're easy to parry when they're coming towards you, but you miss on the repost all the time and it really bugs me. So I ended up doing a jump parry just then just to catch them because they're absolute assholes. But as I was saying, I prefer X's personally, just because it's it's quicker, it's easier, and I get punished less for doing that. The the parries and the blocks, the move itself, when you press forward and X, and Raiden does the defensive stance, it's active for a couple of seconds. I don't exactly know how long. It's not too long, but it's long enough. And you can actually spam it. So, for instance, when bosses do those combos against you, you do not have to get perfect par uh, perfect timing to, to block it all. You can just continue to to mash the direction the boss is and X, and you will par and you will block. Sorry, all of the attacks. It's not necessarily clean, but it's damn effective, and it doesn't take any real strategy. If you're wanting to get the parry timings, that's different. You're going to need to to get the rhythm of the attack and and learn when the, where the sweet spots are. And for some bosses like Sam, it can be very difficult because they're fast and you think you've got the parries perfectly and sometimes they just don't work. An enemy I just cannot seem to parry is the dudes with the hammers. Uh, my timing's pretty good. I've tried and tried and tried and I just cannot seem to do it. And it's on the red attacks. It's not trying to do the gold attacks, which, which are unblockable. Ooh, that right there. That was so lucky, that was that move I hate, where they jump on the wall and then they do the stupid tracking and zoning in on you and, and smash you, but I got super lucky because I landed the parry and I think it hit both of them. And you'll notice there's a raptor as well backing them up. So this guy here does a jump attack, his foot turns into a glowing blade before he does an attack, which tells you that he's going to start sweeping. Not too sure what that purple stuff is, but I know it's bad news, so get away with it. Get away from it, sorry. Same with any of those purple attacks, they, they pretty much stun you every time it does it, so you want to get as much distance from them as you can. Attacking these can be a very viable strategy, hence why I mashed that guy down there. Parrying them works wonders too. Uh, they're not too bad unless they're in a group, and then because they constantly rush you, they kind of clusterfuck you, and it's difficult to see. <laughs> 